good people. I'm Dimitri. When we first published the Asus Z11 review, it was polarizing. Some people loved it for its unique design and form factor, but majority of you really hated it from an ITX size perspective because it's absolutely massive and it's also really expensive. It's really funny how a computer case can invoke such feelings, but I feel like I didn't really do its justice in terms of its showpiece element because I feel like that's what the case is designed for. It's not for your average ITX niche market who love ITX and the compact form factor that comes with it and overcoming the challenges with cooling and hardware support. And I still stand by that statement. This is a showpiece case only. And so I really wanted to true that statement to the test. I feel like I didn't do the hardware in the review justice. So let's fix that. 400, 400, 400. yeah. Ah, the rival three wireless, nice. get up to 400 hours of playtime with two AAA batteries at 1000 Hz, that's plenty of time to own in games with a good shape, user-defined weight, and a mouse that is also Bluetooth ready. The SteelSeries Rival 3 Wireless, check it out below. So honestly, I just wanted to have fun with this system and this build, not approach it from a particular angle of like the most optimized and cheapest and best for money ITX system, but to do an ROG system instead, who have been huge support for this whole project. So thank you, Asus, without you, this wouldn't have been possible. And also giving us that Strix 3080, whew. I feel very privileged on that one. So we got a whole new set of Epic hardware that I'm excited to play around with. And normally I wouldn't necessarily use the Z11 from an ITX perspective, but seeing this is an old ROG build, it made sense. This is going to be an almost true matte black system, which I'm really excited to show you guys what the end result finally looks like. And I also get a second take on what it's like to work with the Z11, what it's like to build in it, since I've already done the assembly disassembly once, and I get to share my second wave of thoughts and answer some of the questions that you guys left on the original review. All right, you guys ready? Let's rock. Wow, so now that the system is complete, I'm impressed at myself at how little effort I had to put into cable management because this is my second time working with the case so I know how things should be routed, where everything goes. I don't have to learn the enclosure, which I had to do quite a bit of when doing the review. Second time around, I appreciate that 11 degree motherboard angle that clears up a lot of room behind the motherboard for all your cables, because otherwise that space would be non-existent for cable management and with that angle, it makes sense. Next up, the only real way to solve for all the exterior cable management with this enclosure because the motherboard is facing up and so accessing the IO to plug in your USB stuff, to plug in the network, to plug in the display port cable, for example, is just really difficult to access. And that is still really annoying, but using wireless peripherals eliminates the cable clutter and makes cable management for the exterior so much easier. Literally the only surprise with the assembly is that 
I can't believe that Strix RTX 3080 actually fit into the enclosure. Now, specs wise, the case does support triple slot up to 320 millimeters, I believe, for GPUs. And this card is like 300. Uh, 12, 318, something like that. So it is under the limit. And I did have to fiddle around with the angle of the graphics card for it to enter the motherboard PCI slot. And it did. I'm quite happy with the turnout, except for it is very close to the glass panel because it's a really thick card. Therefore, cooling is compromised, but this isn't my permanent system for this card anyway. I do appreciate the consistency of some design elements between all of this ROG hardware. So the ventilation ports on the case match the lines on the GPU, the illuminated lines, and match the similarities on the CPU block as well. That is a really good thing because this being an ROG themed PC, everything kind of works together. Nothing is a sore thumb, nothing stands out design wise. So we are using the ROG Strix B550i gaming motherboard. It's pretty capable with all the ports that I want, all the M.2 slots that I want. We are using the Ryzen 9 3900 XT 12 core processor, which I am considering to replace my Threadripper. So I am losing a few cores, but in reality, it doesn't really matter for DaVinci Resolve and this thing clocks much higher. For cooling, we have the Ryogene 240 AIO with Noctua fans, a really unique design on a CPU block with an OLED screen that can display CPU temperature, other system information, or a simple graphic. And before you say anything, I know this all-in-one orientation is not ideal in the long run, but I'm not hearing any waterfall effects. There's no, as far as I can hear, air inside the pump. Everything's working fine in terms of temperatures. I actually get better temperatures both for both the CPU and GPU in this uh, horizontal orientation then versus the case standing vertically. And eventually I'll put the system apart anyway. For memory, we have this 32 gigabyte kit from Crucial, the ballistics gaming memory at 3200 megahertz. I basically love the design. There's no RGB. It's fairly low profile too. It fits in this build perfectly. And for my M.2 drive, it's the Crucial P5 NVMe SSD at one terabyte. Powering everything is an ROG Strix 750 watt power supply. It's a fairly compact unit. Fully modular, of course. All the cables are black and as low profile as possible, which uh, made cable management in the Z11 super simple. And of course, the graphics card, the RTX Strix 3080. And this thing, in my gaming results, almost reaches two gigahertz on the core without me tinkering with anything, which is incredible. And check out those temperatures. This is an auto fan speed, which again, is super impressive. And running my you know standard 3D Mark benchmarks, I have never seen uh, FPS this high and comparing to my 2080 Ti and 9900K machine, yeah, this thing is absolutely impressive. I know I've been fanboying all over ASUS here, but another important thing that I want to mention here is that this is probably my preferred choice in components when it comes to like brand loyalty. Because when it comes to the driver software, so like the ROG Armory, the motherboard, the GPU, the cooler, and the addressable header for the case are all recognized and are all controlled through a single application. I don't have to re-download a bunch of RGB drivers, a bunch of anything else drivers for the uh, all-in-one cooler, for example, because all that is controlled through a single application. I appreciate that whole user experience experience, uh, second to what I've experienced with the Corsair IQ series, where everything just also connects and is recognized and there's no fuss. So there you have it, my fun little build with Z11. I know it was meant to showcase the hardware and I think I've done its justice in terms of cable management, in terms of some lighting customization where everything just syncs up perfectly without any hassle at all. I'm so glad the 3080 fit inside the enclosure because I was worried and the performance, despite being so close to the glass panel, is very good regardless. All right, guys, I'm Dimitri. Thanks so much for watching. Check out this other relevant content. Subscribe for more. I'll talk to you in the next video.